Okay, let's take a look how we can evaluate limits graphically. We're given this crazy piecewise function here, and we're asked to find the following limits. The first one is to find the limit as x approaches 4. Well, let's locate 4 on our graph. There it is. And for values greater than 2, it's this, looks like a cubic function is defined in that domain. So let's follow the curve, and as we do so, from we'll start from the left, and as we get closer and closer to 4, we see that f of x equals 8. So our left-hand limit is 8. Let's go from the other direction. Let's come from the right-hand side. So follow the curve. As we do so, we get closer and closer to 4. Again, f of x equals 8, so our right-hand limit is 8. And since our left and right-hand limits are equal, then the limit as x approaches 4 is 8. All right, let's look for the limit as x approaches negative 3. So we locate negative 3. Negative 3 would be right here. And for values less than negative 2, this function is defined. It's a straight line, y equals 6. Well, let's see what happens if we approach negative 3 from the left as we do so. We can see that we get, as we get closer and closer to negative 3, our f of x value is 6, or the limit is 6. Coming in from the right side, as we get closer and closer to negative 3, again, our value is 6, our limit is 6. Therefore, the limit as x approaches negative 3 is 6, because the left and right hand limits are the same value, 6. Another way to do this is because this function is continuous for values less than negative 2, we can just substitute f at negative 3 into the function, and that will give us our limit, so it would be 6. And that would be the same for this function here. It's continuous for values greater than 2. Plug in f at 4, and you'll get 8. Okay, let's look at what happens when the limit approaches 0. Now to do this one, I'm going to skip down to do x approaching to 0 from the left. That's what that symbol means, as x approaches 0 from the left. So for values less than 0, it's this function that's defined. So let's follow it from the left and get closer and closer to 0 and see where we end up. Looks like it's going to be negative 2. So the limit as x approaches 0 from the left is negative 2. Now let's look to see what happens as x approaches 0 from the right. The plus sign means from the right. So it's this function that's defined for values between 0 and 2. So we follow the curve, get closer and closer to 0, and we can see that it, the limit is approaching negative 1. So the limit as x approaches 0 from the right is negative 1. Well, if our left and right hand limits don't give us the same value, then the limit as x approaches 0 does not exist. Next, we're asked to find f at negative 2. So let's locate negative 2 on our graph, and it's right here. So let's go up negative 2 here and find out where our function is defined at negative 2. It's not defined here, because that's an open hole there in the graph. So we keep going up. Not defined here. It's a hole in the graph. Keep going up. And there we go. We found a value. The, the closed-in dot means it's defined right here. So f at negative 2, we go over to our f of x axis, is equal to 8. And we can write that in here. Okay, a couple more to do. This one says find the limit as x approaches 2 from the left. So if we're coming from the left to approach 2, it's this function that's defined there. So let's follow the function as x approaches 2, and we can see it's going all the way up here to 7. So that would equal to 7. And finally, we want to find out the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the left. So for values less than negative 2 from the left, it's this line that's defined. So we follow it along as we approach negative 2 from the left, then the limit is 6. And there you go. That's how you find limits graphically.